I, I think I already said too much, but uh, just to say that I, f I found this, like uh, Alvaro said, uh, a wonderful exchange. Excellent. I would like to have the transcripts to read it more carefully, especially with the noise, you know. <laughs> and uh, I, I think that many very good points were made, and maybe we could try to to do a, s a good sum summary of it would be very useful. That's, that's it. All this is archived forever in the web, so that means we can go back and <laughs> will be remembered in 10 or 15 years from now. Uh, very brief comments to the questions. Risk of ICANN mission creep. I would say it's low. There are now forces within ICANN which uh, will stop ICANN if they go beyond their very limited technical mandate. Uh, you cannot avoid to discuss uh, the, the, the MOPO issue or security issue if you deal with uh, critical resources which has some implications. But this is a very specifically linked to the specific issue under consideration, like who is a uh, uh, root server or new CDLDs. And I do not see that ICANN becomes a security, internet security organization or uh, organization for uh, moral and public order in the internet. So this is, um, the risk is very low. Um, another working group on internet governance. Um, I think we have to look really forward and to be innovative. On the other hand, we have to look at what has worked in the past probably is also useful. Do not give away good practice. Be creative and try to do both. Um, the question between direct and representative um, participatory and representative democracy from uh, Oksana. I think this is really a very philosophical question. I think we live in a tr transformation phase. Uh, the representative democracy has a lot of benefits, so, but we see it has reached also in some areas its limits. And I think for the next 50 years at least, we will have probably a combination of elements of representation and direct participation. Uh, to substitute the representative democracy by a participatory democracy just here and now, would probably have very counterproductive effects. In so far, you know, we have to move forward by and bringing movements to existing institutions and changing it more slowly. So it's an evolution and not a revolution, but it goes towards a more participatory democracy. I think this is for sure, but we are just, you know, in the beginning of this. So it's a lo long menu and we have just the soup. So the main course is still to come. Uh, monopoly of represent of governments uh, for their people in international space. Yes, Bertrand, uh, I think this is a challenge. A lot of people do not feel represented anymore by their governments when they are traveling around the globe or, uh, you know, working in international organizations. So here also, that's a new challenge. Let's invent something, you know, which would make multi-stakeholderism really a principle in global diplomacy of the 21st century. And measuring success, this is a weakness. So we, we have no instrument, and this is sad, this is bad. All players, you know, should have a book where they really have criteria and can measure the success. ICANN was very clever by saying, okay, the success of the IGF and of ICANN is that we listen to the criticism in the IGF and we introduced new, CTL, uh, new uh, IDNs for CCTLD. So this is a success. We listen to the critique of the community and we change the GPA into an AOC. So these are concrete results, can be successes. If all organizations, if the ITU would say, okay, we listen to the critical remarks here and it will, we change our constitution, we open it more for civil society, this would be a success story for the ITU. Let's wait and see what they will do in Guadalajara. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tracy, quickly. In interest of time, I'd just like to say I support um, Bertrand's uh, suggestion about the merging of the IGF and WSIS 2015 and support um, Carlos's point about regional IGFs um, sustaining beyond the process. Um, last point will be that what is the decision? If you think about it carefully, um, just pose it to you. A decision doesn't have to be a UN type decision where you sit down and you discuss documents and make changes and scratch out things and so on decision could be a little different, and if we looked at that as a decision making of the IGF, then maybe we could um, take it all differently. Thank you. Very good point, and finally, David. 
I'll um, say three things then. First, go back to regional IGFs. I think that those that I've experienced, um, that they explore what is happening within the region. If they see themselves as feeders to the global IGF, they're not very useful. Um, secondly, on metrics, uh, metrics in this area are immensely difficult. Um, firstly, because um, those we have in WSIS 1 are extremely vague. Connect every village with ICTs, what does that mean? Um, second, because uh, those who report them tend to report inputs rather than uh, impacts or outputs. Um, and thirdly, because any target you set is out of date in two years' time. So you're, you end up measuring things that are easy to reach because technology and markets have moved on. Um, and thirdly, the most important thing, I think, in, in Internet governance is that Internet governance um, entities uh, and specialists should spend more time listening to those who experience the impact of the Internet. 